recording is in progress. Thank you, Andrew, very much. So, um, good morning, everybody. And it is uh, week 40 of our Indigenous Global Unity Summit event. And so we have a guest speaker, Islamat Oshodi, um, today. And uh, with today, uh, we are moving forward. Um, I start as always, though, uh, with our land acknowledgement. Um, so I do say this um, to begin today uh, by acknowledging that we do walk upon the traditional territories of Indigenous peoples. We recognize their history, spirituality, culture, and stewardship of the land. We're grateful to all Indigenous groups for their commitment to protect the land and its resources, and we're committed to reconciliation, partnership, and enhance understanding. We acknowledge the land we're meeting on here in the greater Toronto area is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Wendat, the Haudenosaunee, and the Anishinaabe peoples, and is now home to many diverse peoples. We'd also like to acknowledge the land we're on here uh, in the Toronto area is at the meeting place of two treaties, the lands of the Mississaugas of the Credit and those of the First Nations of the Williams Treaty. We would thank them and other Indigenous peoples for sharing this land with us. We also acknowledge and recognize all of the world's Indigenous peoples as stewards of Mother Earth. So today, uh, as always now, uh, I do want to talk about the events that are coming up. Uh, I want to mention again, uh, just two days ago uh, was International Women's Day. Uh, so Tuesday, March 8th. And um, again, I'm gonna put the link uh, for the International Women's Day in chat because that's an important day. Uh, but there really isn't actually that much happening um, in these weeks uh, until uh, the International Day of Happiness, which is actually Sunday, March 20th. Uh, again, in the chat, I put in a link um, to happinessday.org, uh, which was established by the United Nations General Assembly on June 28th, 2012. Uh, the International Day of Happiness aims to make people around the world realize the importance of happiness within their lives. Um, so then, uh, as I said, not much going on, but then on Monday, March 21st, we have uh, actually quite a busy day because that is the week of solidarity uh, with the people struggling against racism and racial discrimination, uh, which actually starts on March 21st and goes through to March 27th. Uh, again, uh, the UN observance link there where the week of solidarity with struggling against racism and racial discrimination was declared by the UN General Assembly in 1979. Uh, so the week celebrates the importance of for communities and nations to strive toward racial equality and tolerance. Um, following that, uh, I wanted to mention, of course, March 21st, which is the first day of that uh, week, which is the International Day for the Elimination of Racial Discrimination. I provide a link to UNESCO, which writes the UN claimed the International Day for the Elimination of Racial Discrimination in 1966. Uh, every year, March 21st is recognized as a day where the international community can come together in an effort to eliminate all forms of racial discrimination. Uh, but March 21st is not just uh, the UN uh, Day for the Elimination of Racial Discrimination, it's also World Poetry Day. Uh, where World Poetry Day is the occasion to honor poets, revive oral traditions of poetry recitals, promote the reading, writing, and teaching of poetry, foster the convergence between poetry and other arts, such as theater, dance, music, and painting, uh, and raise the visibility of poetry in the media. As well, on March 21st, uh, that is actually the International Day of Forests. Uh, where the UN General Assembly proclaimed, again, March 21st, as the International Day of Forests uh, on November 28th, 2012, uh, with the day celebrating and raising awareness of the importance of for all types of forests, um, with various events celebrating and raising awareness for the importance of all types of forests and trees outside of forests uh, for the benefit uh, of current and future generations. Again, 
uh, in the chat. Oops. I am putting that link. Uh, of course, Monday, March 21st, we are now looking uh, at most likely also uh, being the day when we try to do our first tea diplomacy initiative global uh, virtual event as well. Uh, so I am in discussions right now uh, to do that, um, but uh, we can talk about that later. Uh, for now, what I'm going to do is I will start my presentation, standard presentation. For the opening. So share the screen. Share. So um, welcome back, everybody. Uh, so this is, as always, um, our IGU summit. This is now week 40. I start the presentation by giving recognition to our supporters and sponsors, uh, in particular, of course, Andrew Networks. Uh, which uh, we had Edfu Foundation as our primary sponsor uh, prior uh, for the Global Unity Network weekly Thursday Zoom calls. Um, we're now going to go through December 29th, 2023 with Andrew Networks, uh, which is also rebroadcasting at this any production ready episodes on uh, at iagba.org domain um, redirected to the ucit.tv site. Uh, you also notice our logo indicates that this is the 21-23 ITU summit. Um, we do plan to continue delivering these Thursday events uh, until the end of 2023, again, in alignment with the UN Global Compact uh, vision and strategy, which is from 2021 to 23. Uh, again, uh, always put the links in the chat if we have any new members. Um, logos on this page you'll see uh, as examples the Maui Aloha project the Five Points Youth Foundation the Ad Hoc International Advisory Board Goodwill Ambassadors Future Lift Foundation Global Peace Let's Talk the American International Education Federation IDFU Foundation the Conser Conservancy Trust the Saga Foundation the LA Global Foundation as well as our own logos uh, for the Tree of Peace and Reconciliation uh, and the Greater Unity Network, uh, and the Indigenous Unity Flag, and the Unity 4K Clubs, and the Heptamatrix Partnership uh, template of the Global Unity Business Group and Ad Hoc International Advisory Board, uh, along with a uh, few others as well. Um, I do put into the chat a few other links um, that you for the organizations that you are seeing there, so that everybody can make sure that they have those uh, and you can always save the chat. So uh, one more time, our uh, primary sponsor, Andrew Networks, supporting the promotional ecosystem for the Global Unity Network Initiative, um, which will again continue through uh, December 29th, 2023, with Andrew Networks donating our hosting and promotional support services. Um, Andrew Networks being a brand and domain name owned by Parx TC tra Export Trading Company, uh, comprising various social media channels, including TRN TV, Universal Citizens Media Networks, the Conversations with Andrew Williams Jr., and uh, a number of others as well. Again, Andrew Networks links can be found in the chat. So Andrew did found the Ad Hoc International Advisory Board of Goodwill Ambassadors, Advocates, and Activists uh, back in September 2019. Uh, we're focusing on localizing the sustainable development goals during this decade of action and delivery on the SDGs 2020-2030. Uh, uh, Andrew did appoint me as uh, what the representative for Canada, the Francophonie in the Commonwealth of Nations countries, uh, with that originally published January 1st, 2020. Um, so I was later appointed as representative for Turtle Island in early 2021 uh, to the ambassadors and found in the chat. So my name, uh, Lloyd Halferty, um, Chief Ecosystem Director, Program Development Director and Sustainable Society Consultant for Energy and University, uh, which is headquartered in Manhattan, New York City. Uh, I am located in uh, City of Markham, Greater Toronto area. Oop, a little bit of noise coming in. We're having uh, fire drills today. <laughs> um, so Energyme University, the private 5013C nonprofit uh, company, New York City, 
a member of the UN Global Compact, a UN Academic Impact member and partner. Um, fire oh, there's the fire. <laughs> Announcing they're finished. So Energym U uh, is a virtual university uh, created to help empower global populations to reestablish a sustainable balance with our local environments um, by designing and implementing projects that support strong and diversified local economies while integrating core sustainable technologies and infrastructure uh, into the communities uh, in the areas of renewable energy, high density food growth solutions. Uh, and systems for sustainability, managing local waste streams and protecting local water resources. Um, so Energime again, supported by over 375 companies uh, whose products and technologies we employ, um, supporting again, critically education and training in the construction, deployment and maintenance of all the various integrated solutions for achieving these closed loops, closed loop systems uh, that support self-sufficient sustainable communities. Again, my uh, information is in the chat. Uh, so uh, I am also the co-founder and administrator of a group organization called We Energize Global Cooperation Turtle Island International Civil Society Organization. Uh, we are seeking to undertake what we call life value peace education uh, done in the context of life learning gardens. Uh, this was the starting point for nearly everything we are doing. Uh, today and since we began doing this. Um, so I was uh, also designated as a Goodwill Ambassador for the Five Points Youth Foundation in Los Angeles uh, with a portfolio that covers, again, Canada, La Franco, the Commonwealth of Nations and Turtle Island communities uh, as this member of IAGBA seeking to empower our communities to engage with the Royal Indigenous and Tribal leadership as well as helping local communities to establish interfaith neighborhood academic and business collaboratives or INABCs uh, that will come together and pledge to support all of the local humanitarian entrepreneurs who are globalizing the global goals, starting of course with the sustainable development goals uh, as we seek uh, ways to leave no one behind. And uh, you can connect at ad hoc international advisory board uh, links uh, provided. Um, oops, something went weird, strange there. Um, so I am also co-founder of the Global Unity Business Group, uh, came together as a coalition of small businesses in order to establish, manage, and grow this Global Unity Network. Um, the business group is a humanitarian enterprise, a global sustainable and regenerative development corporation supporting and promoting the local delivery of open source, regenerative, climate smart infrastructure. Uh, set up as these life learning gardens, along with a hybrid virtual learning platform that we call the VCN or the Interchange for Peace. So the Global Unity Business Group uh, created in order to formalize uh, the ad hoc international advisory board process of globalization of the global goals, starting with the SDGs, uh, done in, by the establishment of the Global Unity Network, uh, including the Unity Gardens Network and the Unity Learning Network to start along with many dedicated unity networks uh, that are important components of this what called network of networks. Uh, so it's important to note that the existing social media, WhatsApp, Facebook, and LinkedIn groups that we're using right now are being used as placeholders uh, as we build the global network and prepare to launch. We will eventually get all of the people, companies, and nodes in the network onto this interchange for peace VCN or will they then be able to gain access to the many tools and services that are available there uh, and work and much more easily collaborate in order to locally implement all of these globally coordinated real world events, projects, enterprises, and infrastructure ultimately. So again, uh, in the interim uh, are some links to our uh, professional groups and social media. Uh, so the Global Unity Network uh, was created to showcase global cooperation, uh, SDG 17 essentially, for the implementation of the local regenerative solutions for achieving the global goals, uh, starting with the 17 Sustainable Development Goals, the SDGs. So our goal is to help uplift the traditionally marginalized communities that are mostly being left behind because the existing economic paradigm is focused on making money for those who are already wealthy, by extracting resources through the exploitation 
uh, usually over exploitation of people and the natural world. And therefore the majority of people on earth are mostly being ignored by our existing highly competitive economy. So our focus is thus on the billions of people who exist or subsist on the economic sidelines where we intend to start our work by helping local communities deliver the various regenerative local enterprise solutions that people and communities in some of the least developed countries, communities and local economies require in order to thrive. So the entry point um, that we are focused on in particular uh, in these communities uh, that are most uh, food insecure. So again, the Global Unity uh, Network social media uh, in the chat. Uh, so there. So our, our Global Unity Network is promoting delivery uh, of a suite of practical solutions to achieving the global goals, uh, starting with the SDGs uh, during this period until 2030. Um, we are focused on using uh, three main tools of what we call humanitarian entrepreneurship, focusing on the female and feminist humanitarian entrepreneurs and enterprises, uh, and using hybrid virtual and hands-on education and training and learning programs, platforms, curricula, with the primary focus on delivering the various humanitarian entrepreneurship skills training in these practical settings, so practicum learning, along with leveraging the open source regenerative climate smart infrastructure solutions to remotely assist local INABC teams um, and entrepreneurs to establish local collaborative open source Unity Garden classrooms uh, in all of the local communities around the world. So the Unity Garden classroom set up in collaboration with existing schools uh, in local communities uh, used for the local and remote delivery of the practicum learning programs for all of our what we call FFHE members so they can learn to, how to grow, process, cook, market, sell, trade, the various types of regenerative climate smart food and related nutritional and medicinal and other types of locally produced regenerative products within their own local communities or regionally, nationally, continentally, even internationally uh, in order to produce income uh, and hopefully greater prosperity for themselves and for the people in their own local communities. So for all people, all continents uh, with the intention uh, and goal of leaving no one behind. So I, I like in uh, our little used, uh, but still existing uh, UnityNet Smart Cities um, link. So we are now on page nine. Uh, we do also promote through the virtual social marketing, all the members of our network. Uh, so we use the various practical social media networks and trade tools, including the modern fourth industrial revolution. Uh, tools, uh, combining the wisdom of the crowds, uh, along with what we call the deep indigenous knowledge of our ancestors and the living indigenous people of this earth in order to learn from each other and how to share the abundance of this planet uh, in order to create productive, regenerative, climate smart landscapes wherever we may live uh, in and around each and all of our local communities. So our intention is also to help restore nature uh, and biodiversity ensure abundance for all and ultimately restore the human connection to mother earth uh, as proper stewards of this uh, one and only uh, planet that we have. Putting in uh, to the chat, the Unity Biodiversity Network uh, is related to that. So I am going on to page 10 today, which is a new page. Um, so I wanted to mention that the Ad Hoc International Advisory Board process of localization of the global goals is actually intended to help everyone in their own, uh, in each of their own local communities establish these local teams of humanitarian entrepreneurs, as well as the local community support network. Uh, so the INABCs that provide support and ensure uh, the success of the local cooperative humanitarian enterprises that are starting, of course, with the Unity Gardens uh, that will be home uh, and start to be established in each local community across the global network. Uh, most likely, of course, starting in Africa, but also here in North America, possibly also in Asia as well. So this process of establishing the local INABCs, Interfaith Neighborhood Academic and Business Collaboratives, is done by taking part in our Abraham Project, the Tree of Peace and Reconciliation tree planting ceremonies that we plan to do on World Environment Day, so June 5th. Uh, so where some communities will also establish twin trees of peace and reconciliation and twin these unity gardens 
Uh, this will be done through what we call the CTP program, process of twinning uh, the local community unity garden humanitarian enterprises, and also twinning the local community INAB collaboratives. Uh, so we're, what we're building here is a global network of local INAB collaboratives, basically these INABCs, where all the members of each local INAB collaborative will be interconnected, watching over, talking to each other at the global level, where each local INAP collaborative will have a diverse set of members from, of course, the seven different sectors of each community. So public, private, civil society, academic, interfaith, finance, orange economy, the creative sector. Um, we'll also be watching, promoting, and helping each other, supporting the local, mostly female entrepreneurs in each local community who will be empowered by all of the members of the global network where all activities are also intended to be transparent uh, to all members of the global network, including all the members of the local INABCs, uh, who will also be accountable to uh, and for the success of the local collaborative Unity Garden humanitarian enterprise. Uh, th th that means that if the local female feminist humanitarian entrepreneurs who are living in the local community fail to be successful as they build and run their local collaborative or cooperative community unity garden humanitarian enterprise business, uh, provided that they're fully dedicated to making, making it successful for all the members of the community, and especially for those who are most marginalized in each of our local communities. It will not be entirely on their shoulders alone. They're not bearing some, of course, unforeseen circumstances. Um, but rather any failure could also at least partly be blamed on the local community uh, INAB collaborative members for not having lived up to their obligation to support and empower the local community humanitarian entrepreneurs who are building, operating, maintaining, and delivering all the, these community programs, events, interventions, goods and services that will be delivered in the context of these um, community unity garden humanitarian enterprises. Uh, so I am also suggesting as well uh, that every community unity garden humanitarian enterprise could also or should also be established as a cooperative enterprise or business uh, where the idea is actually to set up the local community business as a cooperative, a co-op. Uh, so the burden of running the business doesn't fall entirely on the shoulders of a single entrepreneur. Uh, although there are different business models that can be tried uh, in order to determine uh, what business model might actually work best. Um, so I'm putting again, in, again into the chat uh, so a new link or a couple new links to the concept of cooperative enterprises so people can better understand the, these uh, co-op processes, um, which align, I believe, quite well uh, with what we are trying to do here. And so uh, that is slide 10. I will now uh, break and we can allow our guest speaker to come on and do their presentation. Professor, uh, 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 Professor, uh, the prophet uh, Anyao has a hand up, please. Yeah, okay. Yeah. We, we can take a, a couple minutes here before our presentation, I suppose, if Prophet would like to say a few words. I just had a question and you can answer it later. I was just noticing the slides and it was really clear the different categories. I wondered if there's a could be a clear category for mental health and then for the CAM, the complementary alternative integrative piece. The hemp is very clear, but it doesn't really fit what, uh, ex exactly under there. So it's really clear that traditional alternative complementary is a category as well as mental health, which is a big part of all the sectors. That was just my question. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Prophet, for for raising that. Of course, my presentation um, is actually much longer. This is only the the first ten slides. Now, um, I actually have in total sixty six slides in this full presentation, which is which is probably two hours uh, in total if I were to go through the entire thing. And I, I actually I have to admit I don't have those particular slides about mental health. Uh, and many of the new discussions we've been having over the last few weeks uh, as part of my presentation. So we'll likely move on to 70 or even maybe we'll get to 80 slides at some point. As no, 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 I just meant like those, lo uh, those icons are so clear without the other 55 slides. Looking at those, I get uh, understanding. Can, is there a way to add one for mental health, one for CAM? Just quick, and I see Andrew's hand up, so I'll be quiet, I'm gonna mute. 
<laughs> well, actually, <laughs> the answer is if you put it there, because actually Lloyd is doing all of this on his own effort, as are all of us. If this is to be truly co-creative, then I would suggest that uh, you put the work in. Well, I can do one of those. Can I get that little icon? Because I noticed, I was noticing, because uh, I do like, I'm not an artist, but I like those kinds of things. I see the, the the basic icon and that you put something on top of each, the one for health, the one, a book for the education. If you give me the basic one, I could put CAM on one and mental health on the other. Yes, sir, I mm -hmm. can do that. Yeah, no, I, I can also add it as well. I think that, that could be something in, I can uh, do, but uh, um, I, I just, maybe what I'll do is I'll write it down in my book right now to do that. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't have to be on page 80, just right there as an icon, because the, those pictures are a thousand words in themselves. Thank you so much. Thank you, mm -hmm. Andrew. Uh, and Lloyd, I would like to briefly share my screen just a moment. Yeah, I'll stop my share. Okay. Yes, you mentioned uh, one of the next events coming up is re regarding happiness. And there is actually an SDGs for Happiness pyramid that we may or may not know, but it's, I think it's something we might be able to take advantage of in our explanation to the world about what we're doing. So <clears throat> I do want to say, too, that I don't condone, support, or even like all of the activities of the United Nations, but I do recognize it as the largest inter, inter national organization that brings insight from countries and people around the world. However, the action stage of what we're doing now, again, comes under what Lloyd referred to earlier as United Nations Global Compact. That's, as he says, is a, a, a combination of, <clears throat> excuse me, of civil society, business, governments, and private sector to work together. But there are multiple uh, initiatives that are happening such as this SDG happy, happiness pyramid. So Lloyd, I do want to add an action step when we discuss these particular UN observance days. I like to find the ways that we can add an action step to let people get fully engaged. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, it could also be added to our calendar if somebody has, has an event that they would like to do every year on, on the World Day of Happiness. Uh, we, should, we should have that event just as we look at all at the calendar of events. Um, I'll volunteer. I'll <laughs> submit my information. All right, awesome, Andrew. We'll, we'll have a we'll have Andrew's Andrew's uh, bubbling bubbling happiness uh, infect us all. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Andrew, May May sixteenth, we're doing a strong uh, international stronger than for women for women who have, have been gone through trials and struggles and they've uh, emerged stronger than their circumstance. We're doing, we're doing something uh, tonight. We're doing something on the 26th, but also May 16th. We want women around the world to give their what it is that they're stronger than and to be on one accord with us. So I don't know if you accept other oh, kinds wow. of uh, things. Well, perhaps you could share that here too with this group and with all of our other groups, Prophet. So that ball's in your court. Juliet, I see your hand raised as well. Oh, yes. Yeah, sorry about that. And also, I wasn't aware that I was unmuted. No, I, I actually wanted to climb on the bandwagon for the World Happiness Day. Uh, um, yes, I am also thinking um, I'm getting inspired. You know, I've been dealing with a lot of psychosocial mental health issues. So this would be a nice opportunity to do something um, on, on, uh, to mark that day. And I don't think we've ever mark that day in our, in our calendar on our projects. So I will think, and I'll also maybe talk to Andrew and see what we can coordinate. Whatever you do in that side, there's a way of linking up and I'm sure we can do something here in South Africa. We all need a bit of happiness, hey? Excellent. Actually, I'd like to mention as well, um, I think I know who we can, I'd like to create a unity happiness group. Um, discussion group because there is a gentleman I just not another one was inter yeah absolutely another one because Andrew's Andrew's going to lead this one along with along with yourself um, but uh, I just was uh, introduced to a gentleman I I uh, connected to him on Facebook uh, he's from um, what's that Southeast a South Asian Southeast Asian country they they use the happiness index. 
um, instead of GDP? Bhutan. 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 So, yeah, so he's from Bhutan. Yes. Uh, and I, I'm hoping also to create a, a Unity Net Bhutan country chapter as well with him. Uh, but we can connect with him and perhaps have a conversation around the the, the uh, happiness index that they use in their country. Uh, promote that to be used around the world as well, perhaps. Yes, sir happiness song too it's too bad we can't get funding so that the singer happiness is you know that song i forget his name but there's a gentleman that sings and dances and goes all over the world singing the happiness song get someone to <laughs> to give us the money to use that as a theme yeah uh, let's get happy right yeah. let's get happy right <laughs> yeah yeah That's well it. talk talk to andrew i think he has the connection to a, a global hip-hop uh organization that uh may may possibly have some interest in that. If you uh, submit so, the proposal, I'll put, it, I'll, I'll put it on the right desk. <laughs> OK. No, no, that's an excellent one. I mean, we can even have a multi-lingual happiness theme to it, uh, to a song. There are a few songs about Jabulani in South Africa. I don't know if yes, you guys know yes, it. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah no. Jabulani. Jabulani means hep, uh, uh, be happy. So we, let, let's, let's explore those, those options. So already we have a theme. We build around music. I think it's excellent. Yay! Well, then, there's there's some the drumming... amazing songs that came out of out of South Africa, and there was one yeah. in particular that that really uh, took the world by storm during the pandemic and the early days of the pandemic. I think in 2020, um, I forget the name right now, but that was an incredible song that just just took the world by storm. And Miriam. Makiba has some, I don't know if it was called Pati, but, but if we, what about taking the happy song from Pharaoh, putting it with the, uh, with the South African, getting some from Asia, getting yeah. some and weaving it all together. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Uh, copyright, yeah. is, copyright issues and intellectual property is a greater challenge that I think we want to deal with. But again, I'll turn it back over to you, Lloyd. Yeah. So okay. we, we, do we have our guest speaker on the line here, Islamat? Uh, yes, you're up in the up in my top corner. So, did you want to? Did you have uh, to your opportunity to share your presentation with us? And uh... thank you, thank you, Woody Hall. I just want to contribute to what Professor Hefty have just said on the day of happiness before I start the presentation. Can you hear me? Yes, we hear you oh, fine. You're hearing me. Thank you very much. Well, much as everybody is happy and is worth celebrating the day, but I said it during a international day of education, that is a day that all of us should join and celebrate. We should make a lot of noise out of it. You understand me? Because education cuts across every aspect. And if we are able to embrace that, it will reduce the number of out of school children that we have in our own community. I know you may not be experiencing that one over there. In our community, that's what is really going on. So I believe if, if a loud noise is given to International Day of Education, just as we always give Children's Day, International Day of Children, Children's Day, Women's Day, it will go a long way in reducing the out of school and even assisting the illiterates to get educated. So that's what I want to contribute to what Prof has just been saying in the area of happiness before I start my presentation. Thank we you very much. You. Fully agree. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Now my presentation. Can I say something before do you start that? Go I'm, ahead, Stephanie. I, I, I'm completing it. I, I'm in my last year of my doctoral studies at the University of Toronto, OISE, the Ontario Institute for Studies in Education, who is usually a rebel. But we know that, you know, all the schools are about um, everything is about literacy uh, and literacy has changed with the smartphone and apps that can do different things. Um, 
and there's also, you know, uh, our natural literacies. But my doctoral research, it's about the labeling that comes around the world um, and the, like the self-esteem that one has for young, young children that last into adulthood. And, um, and you know, that, that's why I'm always so uh, about the well-being of people. Be, uh, my particular research looks at kids across the world. It doesn't matter what uh, uh, nationality, doesn't matter what religion, what color, it doesn't matter anything, what, you know, um, and it has a big impact. Um, it has a big impact. It, it's one of the huge, you know, it's huge. Uh, systemic, it's a huge systemic um, issue that um, really needs attention, but it um, can be done in so many better ways than it's done right now. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. Thank you very much. I think I can start my presentation. Yes, you can share your screen too if you if you like. Oh, thank you very much. Now, uh, well, let me introduce myself. I'm Islamia Tolaiton Oshodi, the National President Association for Childhood Education Practitioners, and. I've been in this program for quite some time. Um, I, in my country, I'm the coordinator of National Council for Child Rights Advocates of Nigeria. And we've been doing a lot of work in the area of child abuse, child neglect, all the inhibiting action that are militating against the growth and development of Nigerian child. Now, my topic is implementation of SDG rules in our organization, Association for Childhood Education Practitioners. Can I, can, can I have the clear screen? Because I can't have the clear screen because of the message on my... Yes, please. You can share your screen if, or if you have okay. a presentation you want to share, make okay. sure it's in the chat. We can share, but you can share your screen, yes. Oh, all right. I will. Please, just a minute. We promise not to leave. Yes, we will soon. Would somebody wish to sing a song to entertain us while we're waiting? <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps the happy song. There we go. That's it. Mm -hmm. Ah, you know it is. Jump for joy, whoa, Africa. The Lord. And it's your not God. copyrighted. Okay. Now, with me seeing it, I promise you, the owner won't recognize it. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Uh, Introduction. Jump for joy, oh, Africa. Wow. Can we start, please? Yes, we okay. can start the way Thank you. Yes, kids. Let's, <laughs> let's this start. This one is doing a presentation. I'm, sure, I'm sorry for the short delay. It's just that the system I'm using, I got it very, not quite long. You understand, was a present given to me, not quite long. So I have to master the English. So, introduction to SDG in Nigeria. Like many other countries, committed to implementation of UN United Nations Agenda on Sustainable Development, which we adopted in 2015. We all know 
what it is. Successive nation medium term plan have aligned national development objective, such as education, health, and environment to SDG. The Federal Ministry of Budget and Planning is the center of SDG in our country, Nigeria, with 36 states of the Federation that have also constituted their SDG mechanism. Introduction of ASEP and SDGs. As an education, as an education NGO, ASEP's work focused primarily on SDG 4, which mandates, for, which mandates countries to ensure all girls and boys have qualitative education by 2030. The goal also aim to provide equal access to affordable vocational training, eliminate gender and wealth disparities, and achieve universal access to high quality education. ASEP work in line with the mission to advocate for children and youth and ensure that governments deliver on their objectives to educate future leaders. ASEP focus on education in line with UN Sustainable Development Goal 4, which requires countries to ensure that all girls and boys complete equitable quality and primary and secondary education by 2030. ASEP mode of engagement. In order to support the implementation of SDG 4 on education, ASEP engages with government, private sectors, and development partners to improve the education quality, access, and reduce costs. By key, the key mode of engagement are as follows training and development of teachers for improved learning outcome in children, humanitarian activities and support for poor persons, partnership with NGOs, governments, and private sectors, transition on online learning, participation in inter international fora. Uh, Islamat, can I ask, do you have a, a visual presentation for us that you could share your screen? Yes, we are trying to do so that we can share the screen so that everyone can see. In 2004, the Nigerian Institute of International Education, NIIE, contacted ASEP to coordinate a program on training for teachers for the 36th state of the Federation. Mrs. Ola Wills and Professor Patnaik and a group of educators took sabbatical from California to direct the program. During their one month stay in Nigeria, ASAP mobilized participation from across Nigeria, took care of the venue for the program and the accommodation of the experts. The program are highly successful. And the training was very impressive. They attend that uh, teachers were shown how to, in, how to handle children by using local materials in, in curriculum delivery. Partnership and engagement with local partners. ESA programs have been strongly supported by wide national or public institutions, multinational organizations, private philanthropies, and NGOs. These all contribute, this all contributes 
to our success. Educational institution. We collaborate with University of Lagos, Tunila. During the, we have a lot of program that we did together. Then University of Education now, Ijaniki. Michael Otiadola University. Government agency, UBEC, Student Federal Ministry for Youth and Social Development. Private Philanthropies NGO, Alpha Seta, Partnership and engagement, global and international partners. ASAP partners with global and international organizations to implement programs relating to childhood education and children advocacy. United Nations Education and Scientific Cultural Organization, UNESCO, United Nations Information Center, World Forum, which we shall be attending their conference in May in Honolulu. National Association for the Education of Young Children, which you been on set, which we have attended their conference and also do a lot of things together. In 2017, we went with the Lagos State Government officials for their conference. And their conference usually is always one of the biggest early childhood organization and a rallying point for professionals in early childhood education. Distribution of supplies. Key private sectors, donor, and finance the supply of donations are Alpha Seta, Action Solution, Action Solution, Learning Empowerment Response, which is LEARN. They have been supporting our organization. Other engagements are the various local government, SUBEV, obviously we handle children and we deal with education. We cannot avoid working with SUBEV and, and UBEC. And a good number of NGOs. In my capacity as a Lagos State Coordinator of National Council for Child Rights Advocates, anytime we have program, we invite all NGOs to come along. And this is an NGO that in Lagos we have over 250 members. As transition to online learning. SAP is working with educators and providing support for the transition to online learning. In 2001, SAP looked at the way learning will be made easy and decided to launch the e-Expo Collaborative Network. ASAP has rolled out e-Expo Collaborative Network as global response to network education in Nigeria. ASAP is in the process of signing memorandum of understanding with several stakeholders on how to make the e-Expo be more effective in education deployments. Continuous, continuous training of teachers. We do a lot of training for teachers and conferences. Our first international conference was at the University of Lagos. And we paraded a good number from different parts of the Federation that attended the conference to the extent that we had over 14 professors on ground. Uh, the chairman, academic advisory board of ASEP, Professor Pai is 
Emeritus Professor Payo Maya is one of the most highly celebrated professor in the area of education in Nigeria. And we have international advisory group that are always ready to give us support and advise us on different, in different areas. At the round table, okay. at the round table conference of ASEP at the University of Lagos, we, are, we have another one coming up in June, um, in July, which I'm going to invite everyone to join us in our conference. Our uh, magazine, the, the fourth edition of our magazine will be coming out, will be coming out. I send the flyer to the platform as well. Networking and conferences improve interaction among members, definitely. During the conference, that is where different organizations will network and discuss various things that they, they need to know about. Several questions, and I must let you know that in Nigerian society, one of the I'm not saying it because I'm the national president of ASEP, but I feel in the area of early childhood education, ASEP is a force to be reckoned with, considering the members of our board. Number one, the quality of program we do. And I must let you know that we don't just stay there alone. We work on out of school children. We had a conference, we had a training program in Habitation of Hope owned by um, Redeemed Christian Church. It's a branch of Redeemed Christian Church, Habitation of Hope. So we went to train their teachers on how to handle street children because they too, they also take all these street, street children and keep them in their body now. So we gave them a thorough training and it was very impressive because we need to reduce the number of out of school children in our society. In those days, we say out of school children, when we were as, um, bringing them from streets, I know how many markets place we went to and how many um, bridges everywhere that we went to on outreach to pick these children and hand them over after counseling them to Subeb State Universal Basic Education Board, which will teach them in schools. What we do when we recover these children is we talk to them because these children are making a lot of money on the streets. Children that are making over 5,000, 10,000 on the streets, you want to immediately give, put them in the four walls of the classroom. They will surely go back. But we let them know that they should look at their role model. They should look at other people. They should not rely on these stipends they are making from outside. They should look at their future. And we are happy. Most of them will be happy to go back to school. So we take them to school, we provide them with necessities that will give them the happiness to be in school. ASAP work has been recognized by and appreciated by various organizations, including UNESCO office for Nigeria and ECOWAS, unique as I've said before, and a good number. I would like you to visit our website. It, you'll be able to see all the awards we have been given over the years on this SDG because it is important. Based on it, I was even appointed the Southwest coordinator on SDG goals. Southwest consists of, there we have five regions in Nigeria and one of them is Southwest. So, 
I happen to be given this recognition. Uh, this um, I was elected as the Southwest coordinator. So, and we have been working seriously on this program. Is it possible you could, is it possible you could put the link to your website in the chat and we can share that with the audience? Okay. I will. I hope you have seen my presentation, have you? No, no, we have not. Really? No. Okay. Oh my God. But if you I could will, also, if, I will so, send it. if, Sorry? You, could share, if you could share the, the, website, the website is, is www.asaponline.org.ng. SF. Could you type that into the chat, please? Yes, I will type it. Let me type it. Yeah, Islamat, this is why I, earlier I said, could you, if you could share your your presentation, your screen with us. That's why yes, I'm that's saying because we don't see anything here. Really? Okay. Let me go back to mine. Okay, it's on the WhatsApp group now. Please, can you click the WhatsApp group? Which one? I'm a member of 100. <laughs> uh, of course, the Global which, Unity which, Network. Which WhatsApp group is that? Global Unity Network. You could, it's better if you just click the, the chat button and then here in Zoom, and then you can write it into the Zoom chat. No, it's not. It's not. It has not. If it's all African diaspora, no, Sorry? it's not. Oh my God. Um, Professor Lloyd? Yes, I'm online. Yes. Um, I wanted to suggest is it possible to have discussions on the presentation and then the the presentation can be put on maybe when you are doing your presentation. Uh -uh. So or, did, or am I not? Uh, I see it in the WhatsApp, your presentation. Yes. Okay. Which one? Which which group? Unity Learning Network. Unity Learning Network. But I can move that. Is it possible uh, that Stephanie, for instance, could you open her presentation and then share your screen? I could. If you may have to make me a co-host, but yes. No, you can everyone can share the screen. Okay. But you are but you are co-host. Okay. Um yes, except here.
Hello. Have I, have I gotten out of the room? Yes, we're still here. Okay, okay, okay. Have yeah. you seen you? You've seen I'm just it? trying to turn it up. Okay, okay, thank you. I'm very sorry. No, don't worry. Get this oh, working okay. soon enough. Here we go. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Do you see? It's, it's just coming in. Okay. It okay. says Stephanie Schuler has started share, screen sharing. Seems a little bit slow. Can you, okay, can you see the screen? Not yet. Opening slowly. Yeah, still cycling. So weird. Stop. There we go. Yeah. Yay. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So do we do we want to do a try try to do a yes. do over from the we beginning? We need a do over for the audience worldwide. I hope it's okay now. Yes, but could you please walk us through it? Uh, okay. it's, it's what we call a Hollywood do over. We have a global yeah. audience, and they need to see what it is you've taken so much time to prepare. If you have the time, we would really appreciate that. Okay, no problem. Yeah. We might as well start at the beginning, Stephanie. Yes, correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. There we go. You can start at the beginning. Did you want to, did you, are you recording this? Did you want to restart the recording, Andrew? Uh, good question. Yes, I will. Let me do that now. <laughs> 